Welcome back to Audiotion, where the magic never stops. As we continue our journey through Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, if you have not listened to part one, just skip this and listen to that first in the channel playlist. So, let's take a quick look back at the thrilling events of the part one. Harry's summer was anything but ordinary, with a strange dream involving Lord Voldemort and an unexpected invitation to the Quidditch World Cup. But what was meant to be an exciting event quickly turned dark when Death Eaters attacked, leaving the wizarding world in fear once more. And then, as if things couldn't get more mysterious, the dark mark appeared in the sky, sending shockwaves through the magical community. Now, as we dive into part two, the excitement builds with the arrival of the Triwizard Tournament and the return to Hogwarts. So, settle in and let's continue this magical adventure together. Chapter 6 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Portkey. The chapter begins with Harry, Ron, and Hermione preparing to return to Hogwarts for the start of the school year. As they pack their belongings, they discuss the first task of the Triwizard Tournament and the potential dangers involved. When they arrive at the Hogwarts Express, Harry is given a frosty reception by some of the other students, many of whom believe that he entered the Triwizard Tournament for attention. Harry is hurt by the lack of support, but he remains determined to prove himself. On the train, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are joined by Cedric Diggory, a student from Hogwarts Rival School, who is also participating in the Triwizard Tournament. Cedric is friendly towards Harry and offers to help him if he can. When they arrive at Hogwarts, the students are greeted by the new defense against the Dark Arts teacher, Professor Moody. Moody is a retired Aura, or Dark Wizard Hunter, and he immediately impresses the students with his experience and knowledge. As the students settle into their dormitories, Harry receives a letter from Sirius Black, his godfather, warning him to be careful and to watch out for himself. Harry is grateful for the advice and feels comforted by Sirius' concern. The chapter ends with the students being led to the Quidditch field, where they will begin the first task of the Triwizard Tournament. Before they depart, they activate the portkey that Mr. Weasley gave to Harry, which transports them to a mysterious location. Chapter 7 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled Bagman and Crouch. The chapter begins with Harry and the other Triwizard Tournament competitors arriving at the mysterious location via the portkey. They find themselves in a field surrounded by a forest and are informed that the first task of the tournament is to retrieve a golden egg from a dragon. Harry is worried about the dangerous task but is determined to succeed. He uses his knowledge of dragons, learned from his studies with Hagrid, to come up with a plan to retrieve the egg. The day of the task arrives and Harry is the first to compete. He uses his broomstick to fly around the dragon, dodging its fire-breathing attacks, and manages to grab the golden egg. He is successful and is cheered on by the audience. After the task, Harry is approached by Ludo Bagman, a former Quidditch player and the judge of the Triwizard Tournament. Bagman congratulates Harry on his performance and offers to give him inside information about the other tasks in exchange for a bet on the outcome of the tournament. Harry declines, feeling that it is unfair and possibly illegal. Later, Harry and his friends attend a meeting of Dumbledore's army, a secret group of students who are training in defense against the Dark Arts. During the meeting, they discuss the mysterious disappearance of a former Hogwarts student, Bertha Jorkins, and the possibility that Lord Voldemort is responsible. 
The chapter ends with Harry and Ron overhearing a conversation between Ludo Bagman and Barty Crouch, the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. They are discussing the disappearance of Bertha Jorkins and the possibility of an upcoming trial. Harry and Ron are unsure what to make of the conversation but sense that something sinister is happening. Chapter 8 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Quidditch World Cup. The chapter begins with the Weasley family and Harry preparing to attend the Quidditch World Cup, a major event in the Wizarding World. They travel to the event with the help of a portkey and are amazed by the size and spectacle of the event. During the match, Harry and his friends witness the arrival of a group of Death Eaters, followers of Lord Voldemort, who cause chaos and destruction in the campsite. Harry, Ron, and Hermione are separated in the chaos and are forced to fend for themselves. As they search for each other, they come across a group of foreign wizards who are being attacked by the Death Eaters. Harry and his friends intervene and help to fend off the attackers. In the process, they meet Victor Crumb, a famous Quidditch player from Bulgaria and one of the Triwizard Tournament competitors. After the attack, Harry and his friends are reunited and are shocked by the events they witnessed. They return to the burrow, where they discuss the implications of the attack and the possible return of Lord Voldemort. The chapter ends with Harry receiving a disturbing dream that involves the death of Cedric Diggory, his Hogwarts rival and fellow Triwizard Tournament competitor. Harry isn't sure what to make of the dream but is deeply troubled by it. Chapter 9 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled The Dark Mark. The chapter begins with Harry and the Weasleys preparing to attend the Quidditch World Cup final. They are still shaken by the events of the previous night, but they are determined to enjoy the match. During the match, Harry and his friends witness the appearance of the Dark Mark a symbol associated with Lord Voldemort and his Death Eaters. The appearance of the Dark Mark causes panic and chaos in the stadium, and Harry and his friends are separated in the confusion. As they search for each other, Harry encounters Winky, a house elf who used to work for the Crouch family. Winky is in a distressed state and appears to have been dismissed from her job. She mentions Barty Crouch Jr., who Harry recognizes as a former Death Eater who was imprisoned in Ashkaban. Harry and his friends are eventually reunited, and they return to the campsite, where they witness the aftermath of the Dark Mock's appearance. They encounter Mr. Crouch, who is searching for his son, and they offer to help the chapter ends with Harry and his friends returning to Hogwarts, still shaken by the events of the World Cup final and worried about the possible return of Lord Voldemort. Chapter 10 of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is titled Mayhem at the Ministry. The chapter begins with Harry and his friends returning to Hogwarts for the start of a new school year. They are greeted with tightened security measures in response to the appearance of the Dark Mark at the Quidditch World Cup. During a divination class, Harry has another disturbing dream about Voldemort and his plans. He confides in Professor Dumbledore who advises him to keep a diary of his dreams. Later, Harry and his friends overhear a conversation between Hagrid and Madame Maxine, the headmistress of the Bowes Baton's Academy. They are discussing the possibility of Hagrid's long-lost half brought her, Grawp, who is a giant. 
Harry and his friends are intrigued by this news. One evening, Harry and Mr. Weasley attend a hearing at the Ministry of Magic, where they witness the trial of Winky, the house elf they met at the Quidditch World Cup. Winky is found guilty of using magic in front of muggles and is dismissed from her job. As they leave the hearing, Harry and Mr. Weasley encounter Barty Crouch Essel, who is acting strangely. They are interrupted by the arrival of Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, who informs them that Crouch Jr. has escaped from Ashkaban. The chapter ends with Harry and Mr. Weasley returning to the Ministry of Magic, where they witness a scene of chaos and destruction. Crouch Jr. has broken into the Ministry and caused mayhem, and a group of Death Eaters have arrived to rescue him. Harry and Mr. Weasley narrowly escape and return to Hogwarts, deeply troubled by what they have witnessed. And so, as the Triwizard Tournament begins to take shape, Harry finds himself caught in a web of intrigue and danger. From the arrival of the Bosbatons and Durmstrang students to the mysterious selection of the champions, the stakes have never been higher at Hogwarts. Thank you for joining us for part two of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The adventure is just heating up, so be sure to stay tuned for the upcoming parts, where the challenges of the tournament will push our heroes to their limits. If you've missed any part of the journey, check out our playlist for Harry Potter books 1, 2, and 3, as well as part 1 of Goblet of Fire. And if you're looking for more magical stories, download the Audiotion app, where you'll find audiobooks across all genres. The link is in the description below. Until next time, keep the magic alive!